Pakistan celebrates 70 years of independence. How have relations with India progressed since partition ended two centuries of British rule? Hello, I'm Arnand Naidu and this is The Heat. Seventy years ago, Pakistan and India were carved from the former British Empire as independent nations, leading to one of the largest human migrations in history. Hindu and Muslim neighbors became more fearful of each other. The ensuing violence killed hundreds of thousands. More than 12 million people fled. Hindus afraid they wouldn't be welcome in the Islamic State of Pakistan, and Muslims worried they'd suffer under India's Hindu majority. Seventy years and three wars later, suspicion and tension remains, with both countries now armed with nuclear weapons. There's much to talk about. Let's get right now to our panel. Joining us here in Washington is Nasir Naveed. He's a resident scholar with Indus, a think tank focusing on issues affecting Pakistan. Mohan Guruswamy is a distinguished fellow at the United Service Institution of India. He joins us from New Delhi. Sadhanand Dume focuses on South Asia as a resident fellow with the American Enterprise Institute here in Washington. And joining us from Islamabad is Musharraf Zaidi, a former principal advisor to the foreign minister. He currently leads a campaign to help address Pakistan's education crisis. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Musharraf, let's start with you in Islamabad, talking about events that took place 70 years ago. Let's listen to the reactions of a young Pakistani student after meeting some of those who actually experienced that partition 70 years ago. Let's watch. Listening to them, we actually had goosebumps on our arms. Like, oh my God, like this is what you went through. And they told us about the horrifying incidents that that I won't say, I won't point to a single community. I would say that humanity was destroyed at that time. Like, he, not, not Hindus or Muslims, but humanity and the people suffered at that time. So here we hear a new generation speaking there. What did you make of what uh, the young lady had to say there? I think uh, the, the way that she spoke really speaks to the hope and the potential of our region, Indians and Pakistanis, uh, the adults, the elders, um, and I'm beginning to start to include myself in that generation, have utterly failed the children of this region. It's not just the children of India and the children of Pakistan that suffer uh, in this region. It's the children of Sri Lanka, the children of Afghanistan, the children of Nepal, the children of Bangladesh. We have utterly failed our future generations uh, with the kind of relations, the state-to-state -state relations that we have in this region. And I think it's uh, far beyond time for us to acknowledge this failure and to start to think about how to construct a future, not just two or three or four years from now, not related to the next electoral cycle in Pakistan or in India, but actually to think about what this region will be like a hundred years after we got rid of the British. Salaman, did partition have to happen? We had this huge, huge migration of people, uh, Muslims moving to Pakistan, East and West Pakistan, and Hindus and Sikhs moving to India. I mean, you're going to have different historians who say different things. Uh, I'd say that uh, many people believe that, uh, my own belief is that it did not necessarily have to happen. But uh, now that it has happened, I think it makes much more sense to look forward and look towards a constructive relationship between the two countries. Now, sir, looking forward, I mean, as we heard Musharraf tell us there that, you know, the people of this generation have failed the children. They need, there needs to be some kind of resolution, a long-term resolution to this conflict. Why are these two countries still mired in so much hostility at this stage? Uh, because these two countries are still living in the past. They should look forward and they should try to man not only manage to resolve their disputes so that they can give a positive and, uh, and a prosperous future to their future generations. Unfortunately, they are still uh, in, in the past and they are not only discussing but they are fighting on, 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 the, on the bilateral issues instead of moving forward and uh, have a competition on positive grounds. Their competition is on negative grounds or negative issues. So that's the thing that is, uh, uh, that is causing them to stay in, behind in the history. But Mohan, uh, maybe we need a bit of a history lesson here. What was the British intention behind dividing India uh, into these different countries? Well, I don't know the British were entirely responsible for dividing India. Indians were also equally responsible for dividing India. We made claims we, uh, of separation, of, of being different from each other. 
and therefore we got what we asked for also. If, if Indians, Muslims and Hindus didn't want partition, partition would have never happened. There were a lot of people who, a majority of people could have been uh, in favor of a united India, but the dominant groups who were leading uh, large parties uh, wanted separation. The Muslim League in particular was very clear. And that's because, you know, they perceived being swamped by Hindus and there were a lot of Hindu nationalism in the air also even then. After all, the RSS and all these organizations are not new. They were there then. We had the Hindu Mahasabha espousing anti-Muslim sentiments and who viewed the entire um, <clears throat> Mughal and Afghan period before that as colonial um, regimes, you know, uh, just like the British were. So we had a new nationalism also coming up in India, and then two nationalisms clashed. So Mohan, do you think that the division, the motivation for the division rather was uh, primarily religious? It was two people following different religions, or was it territorial, or a combination of the both? Absolutely, no, it, it was just, it's a, religion and religion shaped your perception of history Hindus were being taught that they were they were victims of Muslim oppression Muslims were taught that you know that they were the ruling classes of India and how being deprived of of their prime position with, with democracy coming so you know all kinds of perceptions shaped our uh, shaped our views about each other and we're stuck with it but the point is now that separation has taken place now that we're two separate countries why can't we live together we've got what we wanted we've got a Hindu majority in India there's a Muslim majority in Pakistan so you know why can't we live together so Musharraf let me get back to you I mean listening to what Mohan is saying there you know there's uh, so much suspicion on both sides of this divide. If we get to some of the things that have to be done right now, for instance, you got the dispute over Kashmir. Uh, it was split into a Pakistani half and an Indian half. Um, there's a lot of contention over this particular state. Does that have to be addressed first before the two countries can move forward towards resolving other problems that they have with each other? Well, this has kind of been the Pakistani position for a long time, that we have to start by addressing the Kashmir issue. Uh, as a Pakistani myself, that's how I personally feel. I'm personally, emotionally, uh, spiritually invested in a resolution to Kashmir before all else. But I also recognize that there's a whole big country by the name of India that, that is full of people that have a different view about uh, the importance of Kashmir or the centrality of Kashmir. And because we've been playing this game now for 70 years, Years, this kind of dance where the Pakistanis say it has to be Kashmir and the Indians say uh, we're not even talking about Kashmir or more recently especially after Mumbai we'll only talk about terrorism and then we can get to Kashmir so I think that the the taking the position taking any position that we know is going to be countered by an equally rigid position is actually not very productive. I think that there's plenty of areas in which Pakistanis and Indians can get along, and I think that responsible adults in both countries, on both sides of, div of the divide, need to propagate and promote uh, the notion of finding areas on which we can get quick wins, on which we can demonstrate to those that are on the extreme fringes of our society that have a loud voice, whether it's the Hindu right or the nationalist Muslim right or Islamic sort of right in Pakistan, uh, we, we need to find a way to, to show them down, to, to basically show them up and to say that, hey, look, India and Pakistan can sit down and they can solve problems and there is no eternal war that we have to be engaged in. And so for that reason, it may be that Kashmir wouldn't be the first thing that we solve between the two countries. Musharraf, let me ask you this, and it's a question I posed to Mohan as well. Did you think that partition had to happen? Was that the only way that these two countries could exist? Or was there perhaps another way they could do it? Perhaps a federation based along religious or territorial lines rather than dividing it up into three separate countries? You know, I was born in 1975, so I, I evade that question even when it's asked about Pakistan's partition, which happened in 1971. I like to live in 2017 and beyond. So for me, the most important thing now is for us to find a way to give the children of India, the children of Pakistan, the children of Bangladesh, and all the other countries in our region a fair chance at fulfilling their potential. We have one of the most potent uh, sort of civilizations, uh, you know, the, a melting pot of various 
indigenous civilizations that have come together. We have so much energy and enterprise. When you see Indians and Pakistanis get along in London, in New York, in Dubai, and build beautiful things, you wonder what is it that's keeping us from doing this for our own countries, in our own region, and creating opportunities for our own children. Southern, uh, getting back to Kashmir, how important is it for that to be resolved? I mean, it's obviously important from a Pakistani perspective. I would agree with everything that uh, Musharraf said. Uh, I don't think it's realistic uh, for that long-standing Pakistani position, which is Kashmir first and everything else later. Uh, I think, in fact, I think that has become less and less realistic uh, over time as uh, India's perception of itself has changed. Now, I just want to sort of add one thing. You know, we're having this sort of, uh, we're, we're, as we're having this discussion, what was going through my mind was that we could have been having this discussion last year or two years ago or three years ago. But the fact that we're having this in 2017, I think, needs to be sort of, it needs to have a somewhat different tenor, which is that we are not in this hopeful position. I absolutely agree with what you know, my old friend Musharraf had, to, had said in terms of where we should be and how we should be looking at this. But the reality is that in 2017, it's very, very difficult to be optimistic about the trajectory of India-Pakistan relations. Why? Well, what do you see as the... Because I think you've had, uh, you have a sort of competitive hardening. Now, for the longest time, my broad view was that there was a larger peace constituency among the Indian elites. The Pakistani masses, there was never a problem. But among the Indian elites, I would, I'd say there was a greater constituency for peace than among the Pakistani elites, because the Pakistani elites were dominated by the army, which had a vested interest in continuing this conflict. Today, in 2017, I'm not so sure. I think that you see a hardening on both sides of the border. And you don't see this sort of, an, you know, an appetite for this kind of rapprochement or uh, engagement, uh, which I happen to agree with, but I just don't think that it's uh, that that it uh, that it's particularly re reflective. Are you of seeing the, the rise right of now. nationalism on both sides? Absolutely, yeah. and I think that on the Indian side, you have the mm. rise of, as what Mohan also mentioned, you have a rise of a kind of, you know, it's, it's almost as though the wounds of 1947 which India thought it had dealt with in its own way, yeah. have been reopened. And so in many ways, I would say the situation in India in 2017, instead of being better right. on this front compared to, say, five years ago, mm -hmm. uh, is worse. What is your feeling, uh, Nasir? Is it, are you hopeful? Because, I mean, we look at some of the issues that, uh, you know, bedeviled relations between these two countries. Take a thing like terrorism, for instance. You know, India blaming Pakistan for terrorism, Pakistan blaming India for trying to foster separatism in a state like Balochistan. Um, I mean, can both these countries get over that? Uh, yes. Uh, for that, they will have to sit and they will have to start a dialogue from which they are running away, especially since the uh, present government in India, which is led by Mr. Modi, uh, that government is like focused towards only on terrorism. And even on terrorism, they are not like so far willing to talk with Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So far, there, is, there hasn't been any uh, start of a uh, proper negotiations between India and Pakistan. I think that uh, as uh, others have also also mentioned that both countries, they are being run by hawks. Mm -hmm. In the past, we have seen even during the government of uh, Congress, we, we had we, we have seen that uh, there were various sort of like negotiations between India and Pakistan, although they couldn't uh, achieve anything concrete, but they were at least uh, uh, in a position to normalize the relationships. But in this government, you, you can't even see that. Relationship is hot, and uh, it is promoting more nationalism, and it is promoting more uh, aggressive attitudes in, in respective countries. So uh, for the time being, I don't think so, that there would be a practical solution from both sides that can help in, uh, in, in creating an atmosphere where they can talk about the issues. OK, we are going to have to take a break right now. More of our conversation when we return. Stay with us. You're watching The Heat.